lymphatic drainage of the lower limb. The lower limb has superficial and deep lymphatic vessels. The superficial lymphatic vessels accompany the saphenous veins and their tributaries. The lymphatic vessels accompany the great saphenous vein and in the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Most lymph from those nodes passes directly to the external iliac lymph nodes located along the external iliac vein, but lymph might also pass to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. The lymphatic vessels accompanying the small saphenous vein enters the popliteal lymph nodes, which surrounds the popliteal vein in the fat of the popliteal the deep lymphatic vessel from the leg accompany the vein and inner the complete lymph nodes. Most lymph from those nodes extends through deep lymphatic vessels to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. These nodes lie under the deep fascia on the medial aspects of femoral vein. The lymph from the deep nodes passes to the external iliac lymph nodes. The cutaneous innervation of the lower limb uh, these cutaneous nerves in the subcutaneous tissue Supply the skin of the lower limb. These nerves, except from some proximal ones, are branches of the lumbar and sacral plexus. The area of skin supplied by cutaneous branches from a single spinal nerve is called a dermatome. Adjacent dermatomes might overlap except at the X. except at the axial line. The line of junctions of dermatome supply from his continuous spinal level. Branches of the subcostal nerve descend over the iliac crest towards the anterior superior iliac spine and enters the, the superior lateral part of the thigh. They supply the skin of the thigh anterior to the greater trochanter of the femur. The iliohypogastric nerve divides into lateral and anterior cutaneous branches. The lateral branch supplies the skin over the superolateral part of the thorax, and the anterior branch supplies skin superior to the pubis. The ilioinguinal nerve accompanies the spermatic cord or the round ligament of the uterus throughout the superficial inguinal ring to the sperm or labial mages. Branches of the ilioinguinal nerve are distributed to the skin over the proximal and middle cord of the thighs and to the sperm and labial mages through the anterior scrotal and labial branches respectively. The genitofemoral nerve L2 and L3 has genital and femoral branches that supply skin just inferior to the middle part of the inguinal ligament. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and a direct branch of the lumbar plexus runs obliquely toward the anterior superior iliac spine and then passes deep to the inguinal ligament into the site dividing into anterior and posterior branches. The anterior branches become superficial approximately 10 centimeters distal to the inguinal ligament and supply skin on the lateral and anterior part of the thigh. The posterior branch passes superiorly across the lateral and posterior surfaces of the thigh and supplies skin from the level of the great trochanter to the middle of the area just proximal to the knee. 
The femoral nerve arises from the second, third, and fourth lumbar nerves into the substance of the psoas major muscle and enters the side deep into the inguinal ligament, lateral to the femoral vessel. It sends branches to the tight muscle and arterial femoral cutaneous nerves to the skin on the anterior and medial regions of the tight. The anterior femoral cutaneous nerves arise from the femoral nerve, a branch of the lumbar plexus. They arise in the femoral triangle. Pierce the fascia lata along the back of the sartorius muscle and supply skin on the middle and anterior aspect of the thigh. A branch of the obturator nerve is occasionally present. It passes to the medial side of the knee where it communicates with the saphenous nerve and supplies the skin on the anterior, medial, and posterior surface of the proximal part of the thigh. The posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, a branch of the sacral plexus, supplies branches to the skin on the posterior aspect of the thigh and over the popliteal fossae. The sciatic nerve arises from the sacral plexus, passes to the greater sciatic foramen into the inferior gluteal region, and then into the posterior thigh. At the apex, of the popliteal fossa, the sciatic nerve divides into the common fibular peroneal and tibial nerves. Their cutaneous branches are dis discussed with the leg. The organization of tight muscles. The tight muscles are organized into three compartments by intermuscular septa that pass between the muscles from the facial lata to the femur. The compartments are anterior, medial, and posterior, so named on the basis of their location, action, and nerve supply. The anterior tight muscles, the anterior tight muscles, the flexors of the hip and extensors of the knee, are in the anterior compartment of the thigh for attachment nerve supply and main actions of these muscles, right? We see the anterior type muscles are the pectineus, the iliopsoas, the tensor of facial lata, the sartorius, the quadriceps femoris. The pectineus is a flat quadrangular muscle located in the anterior part of the supramedial aspect of the side. The pectineus adduct and flexes the side and access in medial rotation of the side. The iliopsoas is the chief flexor of the side and when the side is fixed, it flexes the trunk of the hip. It's broad lateral part, the iliacus, and its long medial part, the psoas major, arise from the iliac fossa and lumbar vertebrae, respectively. The iliopsoas is also a postural muscle that is active during standing by preventing hypertension of the hip joint. Tensor of facial lata, the tensor of the facial lata is a Useful muscle approximately 15 centimeters long that is enclosed between two layers of facial lata. It inserts into the iliotibial tract, joining fibers from the superior part of the gluteus maximus. Although anteriorly placed, the tensor of the facial lata is actually a gluteal muscle that is usually studied with the anterior side muscle. The tensor of the facial lata receives its nerve supply from the superior gluteal nerve and is supplied by an inferior branch of the superior gluteal artery. The tensor of the facial lata is primarily a flexor of the thigh, however, generally does not act independently. To produce flexion, the tensor of the facial lata acts in concert with the iliopsoas. When the iliopsoas is paralyzed, the tensor of the facial lata hypertrophies. 
pain and attempt to compensate. It also works in conjunction with other muscles, gluteus medius and minimus, to produce medial rotation of the thigh. Any contract during abduction. It lies too far anteriorly to be a strong abductor and thus broadly serves as a synergist of its feature. The tensor of the fascia lata also tenses the fascia lata and iliotibial tract, thereby helping to support the femur on the tibia when standing. It has no direct action on the leg. The sartorius, the tailor's muscle, is a long ribbon-like muscle of the passes obliquely lateral to medial across the superarterial part of the thigh. This muscle descends inferiorly as far as the side of the knee. The sartorius, the longest muscle in the body, acts across two joints. It flexes the hip joint and participates in flexion of the knee. It also weakly absorbs the thigh and laterally rotates it. The action of both sartorius muscles brings the lower limb into the cross leg sitting position, which is still in use by some Asian tailors and jewelers. None of the action of the sartorius is strong. Therefore, other type muscles producing this movement are involved. The quadriceps femoris forms the main bulk of the anterior thigh muscle and collectively constitutes the largest and one of the most powerful muscles in the body. It covers almost all the anterior aspects and sides of the femur. The quadriceps consists of four parts, the rectorius femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus intermedius, and the vastus medialis. The quadriceps is the great extensor of the leg. All four of its parts combine to form a tendinous attachment to the tibia. The three vastus muscles are separable only with difficulty. The quadriceps is an important muscle during climbing, pruning, jumping, Raising from the ceiling position and walking up and down the stairs. The tendon of the four parts of the quadriceps unite in the distal portion of the thigh to form a single strong broad quadriceps tendon. This tendon is traditionally described as attaching to the base of the patella, a large sesamoid bone in the tendon, which is termed in attachment to all the patellar ligament, to the tibia tuberosity. However, it is probably more accurate to consider the patellar ligament as a continuation of the quadriceps tendon in which the patella as a sesamoid bone is embedded. Testing the quadriceps is performed with the person in the supine position with the knee uh, Partly flex, the person extends the knee against distance during the chest contraction. Of the rectus femori, it should be observed uh, and palpable if the muscle is acting normally, indicating that its nerve supply is intact. The patella provides a bony surface that is able to withstand the compression placed on the quadriceps tendon during the kneeling and the friction occurring when the knee is flexed and extended during running. The patella also provides addition, additional leverage for the quadriceps in placing the tendon more anteriorly further from the joint axis, causing it to approach the tibia from a position of greater mechanical advantage. The inferiorly directed apex of the patella indicates the level of the joint plane of the knee when the leg is extended and the patellar ligament is out. The rectus femoris is a, a kicking muscle. 
received its name because it runs straight down the tide. It assists to electors in placing the tide at the hip joint because of its attachment to the hip bone and tibia. The rectus femoris crosses two joints. The hand is flexes the, the thigh and the hip joint and extends the leg at the knee joint. The vastus muscle, the name of this large muscle, indicates their position around the femoral body. The vastus laterally is the largest component of the quadriceps lies on the lateral side of the thigh. The vastus medialis covers the medial side of the thigh. The vastus intermedius lies deep to the rectus femoris between the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis, the small flat articular muscle of the knee. A derivative of vastus intermedius usually consists of a variable number of muscular slits that attach superiorly to the inferior part of the anterior aspect of the femur and inferiorly to the synovial membrane of the knee joint and the wall of the suprapatellar bursae. This articular muscle pulls the synovial capsule superiorly during extension of the leg, thereby preventing falls of the capsule from being compressed between the femur and the patella within the knee joint. Take a look in your atlas. The uh, dissection of the distal thigh and the knee regions. Take a look the vastus intermedius, the patella, the femoris, the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the quadriceps tendon, Take a look at the um, anterior view of the tight muscles, right? And uh, uh, the, the abductors, the quadriceps femoris, and uh, the iliopsoas, the pantorius, right? Take a look in your atlas, right? Everything related with the cutaneous nerves of the tight. The medial tight muscles, the medial tight muscles, the, ab the abductors group are in the medial compartment of the tight. The abductor group of tight muscles consists of abductor longus, abductor brevis, abductor magnus, gracilis, obturator external. Collectively, these muscles are the adductors of the thigh. However, the action of some of these muscles are more complex. Right. The adductors longus, a large fan-shaped muscle, is the most anteriorly placed of the adductor group. This triangular long adductor arises by a strong tendon from the anterior aspect of the body of the pubis just inferior to the pubic tubercle and expands to attach to the linea aspera of the femur. The adductor brevis, the adductor brevis lies deep to the pectineus and adductor longus muscle. The short adductor largely covered by the adductor longus arises from the body and inferior ramus of the pubis and extends as it passes to its distal attachment to the linea aspera of the femur. The adductor magnus, the adductor magnus is the largest muscle in the adductor group. The large adductor is a composite triangular muscle that has adductor and hamstring parts. The two parts differ in their attachments, nerve supply, and main actions. The gracilis, this long strap like muscle lies along the medial side of the side and knee is the most superficial of the 
took the book and is the weakest member. It is the only one of the group to cause the knee joint. It adopts the thigh, flexes the knee, and rotates the leg medially. Obturator externus. The flat, relatively small, fan shaped muscle is deeply placed in the supramedial part of the thigh. It extends from the external surface of the obturator membrane and surrounding both of the pelvis to the posterior aspect of the greater trochanter. Passing under the head and neck, <coughs> the femur. <coughs> Take a look at the femoral triangle in your atlas in the superior third and a few aspect of the thigh. Right. Take a look at the muscles of the anterior and medial aspect of the thigh in your atlas. The anterior attachment, such as a Dr. Longo, Brasiles, a Dr. Previs, a Dr. Manos, uh, obturator external. Um, the actions of the adductor muscle group, the main actions of the adductor group of muscles is to adduct the thigh. The adductors, locus brevis and magnus, are used in all movements in which the thigh are adducted. They also important stabilizing muscle during flexion and extension of the thigh. Right. There have been some testings of the medial type muscles uh, while performed as the person is lying to find with the knee straight. The person adopts the type against resistance and if the adductor are normal, the uh, proximal end of the gracilis and adductor lungs can easily be palpated. The femoral triangle, the femoral triangle, a junctional region between the trunk and lower limb, is a triangular fascial base in the superior third of the thigh. It appears as a triangular separation inferior to the inguinal ligament when the thigh is flexed, abducted, and laterally rotated. The femoral triangle is Bounded. Superiorly by the inguinal ligament, medially by the adductor longus, laterally by the sartorius. The base of the femoral triangle is formed by the inguinal ligament, and its apex is where the lateral border of the sartorius crosses the medial border of the adductor longus. The muscular floor of the femoral triangle is formed from lateral to medial by the iliopsoas and pectineus. The roof of the femoral triangle is formed by fascia larva and cruciform fascia, subcutaneous tissue, and skin. The contents of the femoral triangle from lateral to medial, to medial are the femoral nerve and its branches, the femoral sheath and its content, the femoral artery and several of its branches. The adductor hiatus, an opening in the aponeurotic distal attachment of the adductor manus. The adductor hiatus transmits the femoral artery and vein from the adductor canal in the thigh to the popliteal fossa posterior to the knee. The opening is located just superior to the adductor tubercule of the femur or adductor muscles, except the pectineus and part of the adductor magnus are supplied by the adductor nerve. The pectineus is supplied by the femoral nerve, L2 through L4, and the a uh, string part of the adductor magnus is supplied by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve L4. Right. 
the, the, the contents of the femoral triangle from lateral to medial are, like we were saying, the femoral nerve and its branches, the femoral sheath and its contents, the femoral artery and several of its branches, and the femoral vein and its proximal tributaries just as the great sapphire.